Well, different ways to be creative. I feel like welding is one of those ways. Uh, welding has been around since the early 1800s. And welding is, is pretty much just the fabrication of uh, uh, melting metal. And with that, uh, all pretty much what they're talking about what welding is, is uh, connecting two pieces of metal with a filler metal. Uh, <sighs> filler metal, which is two pieces that holds the metal together. Uh, there are three types of uh, welding types, which is thick welding, uh, MIG welding, and TIG welding, as you can see in the pictures. Uh, these are some fun facts about welding. Uh, over 50% of men, all man-made products were created by welding. Every, everything from automobiles to homes we live in uh, were touched by welding. Uh, welding is one career that is always in high demand. Welders do not need a college degree to practice their trade. They do, however, need to be certified and licensed, but that is a shorter process and less expensive than a four-year program. A welder is highly skilled and trained and can earn a salary similar to what doctors and lawyers make. Uh, the traveling is the fun part of the world's job. They can even find themselves working on a space situation, station, or a deep in the ocean. Most jobs of welders can be found in manufacturing. Uh, during the World War II, there have been more advancements in welding, and that allowed for ships to be made by hyperdrive. The quickest ship only took four days, 15 hours, and 27 minutes. This was in 1942, and the record still holds by this day. Uh, I like to talk about my career in welding. I went to Southside Community College and did uh, welding. I have my I have eight certificates and I am certified and licensed to weld. Uh, I talked to uh, I forgot the company, but I talked to a company in New York. Uh, hopefully, I'll get the job. They haven't called yet, but uh, other than that, man. Uh, first one is stick welding. Uh, pretty much stick welding is just uh, a man it's very very manual um, it requires uh, electrode that's co coated in flux to lay the weld and electric current is used to create an electrical arc between the electrode and the metals that are being welded together uh, stick welding has different wads uh, such as 6013 7014 6011 uh, 6010 and with all those they're just different uh, types of fluxes on there for the weld and the different types. Uh, the 60 is the tensile strength, as you can see from the picture. The E is the electro arc. Uh, the one is the welding position, which you can also get uh, a, a rod that's like a 60-24, which that means the two is for uh, uh, certain, position, certain positions. Uh, the one just means that it's, it's uh, the dude in all positions, such as flat and horizontal. And the last number is just uh, the type of the flux. MIG welding is probably my, uh, my best and probably the funnest and easiest. Uh, it's a method of welding in a filler metal wire. It supplies electrical current to maintain the arc, which is shielded from access by insert gate, usually Arion, and compared to TIG welding. Uh, TIG, I mean, MIG welding is pretty much, just, pretty much just the easiest to me, and it doesn't take that long. On the TIG welding, TIG welding is uh, a method of welding in which the arc is maintained by a tungsten electrode and shielded from the excess of air and so compared to MIG welding. TIG welding to me is probably the slowest in the whole entire world. It's boring. You sit there for like hours and hours just welding on the same piece. And then I have a short clip. It's kind of boring. I couldn't find a funny one. And another one I found had like too much cuss in it. I know you don't, you don't do well with that, so. Hi, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This video is about a little MIG welding technique that I picked up about over 20 years ago from an old timer in South Carolina, and I've been using it ever since. Basically, it is just making a series of U's or cursive E's or small loops or whatever you want to call it. Uh, in your mind's eye, you just try to make the same distance loop every time. And on a lap joint, uh, you watch the top of the puddle 
for the side of the puddle, but the edge of the metal is on it. You just kind of use it for a guideline and just barely let the puddle nip that corner just a little bit, and that'll give you a nice straight uh, border on your weld and a better looking, a better looking weld because you won't be melting all that corner in and, and putting extra metal in uh, to the weld size. All right, the technique uh, looks something like this. You need to kind of, in your mind's eye, intentionally loop the same distance each time. All right, that was left to right. I'm just going to, that was kind of pulling the puddle. This is going to be kind of pushing it a little bit. You can't see the puddle very well, but I just wanted to show you that there's not a lot of difference in the final result. Pushing, pulling, as long as you don't get carried away with the gun angle, as long as your stick out's good and your heat's good, you can make either one work. There's been a lot of argument over pushing and pulling. They both work. All right, so there are some differences in, you know, some subtle differences in penetration and everything, but sometimes you have to weld right to left, sometimes you have to weld left to right. Sometimes things are in your way. Same technique, same exact technique works both ways. There's a T-joint. I'm going to do the same thing here. Now you'll notice here the stick out's a little long. It's because I was trying to weld around the camera and I couldn't really see it that well. But uh, you'll see when... Uh, when the uh, lens is lifted, it's a, it's a pretty good result anyway. So it's pretty forgiving if you have have everything else set up right. See that looks good. All right. And that's it.